And guys, there we go again. It's JDL time. It's Revenge versus Team Liquid. Hopefully everybody's loading in the first go. In the last couple days we had a couple problems with the spectators not loading or even players not loading. Anyway, this broadcast is brought to you by Hafla TV. I'm Hafla Moke myself and with me is Coucher. We sound a bit tired today because we had like about 20 hours of casting yesterday and yeah, sleep wasn't really one of the luxury we had. Either way, this is going to be an amazing game. It's the Peruvians versus the North Americans and I really hope a lot of you people have been waiting for this game because I feel it's going to be awesome. Yeah, indeed it should be. Of course, Team Liquid probably the heavy favorite to take this game. Especially because the last time we got to cast Revenge, it was only one game versus e -Hug. And Revenge, to say the least, they looked really weak, to be honest. But, I mean, I've seen them in their better days as well, so... Definitely still should be a good game, just... We'll come down to the draft and Revenge start unconventionally with a Doom ban. Yep, definitely. Doom. I don't know. Usually, like in the, in the last couple of games, we saw the Doom on like in the in the second duration of uh, um, all the bans coming because like usually we have the Nyx, the uh, Amber, AA, and the Invoker, of course, in in the first. I don't know. It's it's unusual, but it tells us something because Revenge might actually go for something that is really vulnerable to a Doom, and they just don't want to see it. Plus, Team Liquid. I don't know, they don't pick the Doom that often, but they definitely utilize the Doom within their strategy so far. Yeah, and Team Liquid now, with Revenge banning out the AA as well as the Doom, Team Liquid, do you think they want to ban out the Invoker to just make sure they don't go up against that <laughs> nuisance? Well, they, they sort of have to, because they don't have the first pick, so... They kind of have to, unless they say, like, well, we can go against the Invoker any time. Yeah, it's judging very by, I mean, look, they take already 20 seconds of their overtime, so they might actually ban it, or they consider it getting letting it through. What are the other like options? Yeah, the Bat Rider ban. Yeah. I was thinking either the Bat Rider or the Invoker, probably two of the strongest heroes at the moment. Just such playmaking heroes, and that's exactly what you need. It's of course like a puck could be chosen there as well, but the Visage as well as the Prophet for Team Liquid. Yeah, so let the rat begin. <laughs> so Revenge actually, yeah, saving the Invoker. So I don't know if taking the bat over the Invoker was a good decision by Liquid. I mean, sure, the initiation is is off there, but the Invoker, I don't know. Like we've seen so many Invoker games, like where the Invoker was really like the, the deciding factor of the game. But well, we have the Visage with the early and mid-game potential, and we have an HS Prophet, push potential, split push potential, red Dota potential, so that's quite decent for Team Liquid. The question is, do we see it work? Because usually we see the Furion banned out in the second rotation of bans, and when he is picked, I think in the last three games he was picked and he didn't work out. He was sent to the offlane, didn't quite get the XP, and I don't know, it just didn't work out. But yeah, see Bristleback in the meantime. Yeah, this Bristleback, I mean, quite a surprise pick. But then again, I haven't seen Revenge play all that much. It may be common for them. Or maybe just I'm trying to throw Team Liquid off guard. And I think this pick, I mean, it could work. Nature's Prophet is quite squishy by nature at the start. Which just needs at least a couple of levels in Gravekeeper's Cloak before he can handle the Quill Spray as well. And I mean, I like that hero overall, so I'm totally for to seeing him play. Yep, definitely. And to be honest, I like the Bristol back so far because at the moment there's not like last game. Remember last game where we had the Bristol back and he was so lost against all the magical damage and everything that came out there. So like this time the Bristol back, I hope he has a chance to actually get tanky and then be a nuisance with like all his quill sprays. But in the meantime, we have a couple bands that are quite important. Revenge is already focusing on getting the cores out. Nags, Luna. Luna one of the most picked or actually at the moment after 6.8 the most banned and picked uh, carry. And the Nags as well which Nags is interesting because I didn't see it common for Team Liquid. It would be one possibility but yeah more important is Team Liquid gets the Naga out and this is a wise decision because Naga is just as the Invoker really a key hero like initiation or disengage out of the fight with Song of the Siren, or even like the singling out one target.
that has a BKB, it's yeah, it's pretty crucial. If well played, the Naga actually is sometimes the deciding factor. Yeah, I really actually thought that Revenge is gonna pick up the Naga instead of the Bristle back there, but I mean Team Liquid now because Revenge of course did not pick it up, they banned it out as they do with the Ember Spirit as well. So both teams targeting almost the same array of bands, just getting those in annoying late game potential ish heroes out. Yeah, actually Liquid sticks to, to the stats there pretty much. Like the only thing they didn't ban is the invoker, but like if you would put the invoker on the ban list of Team Liquid, you would have the most banned hero after six point eight. Like like in Bat, Naga, Ember and Invoker, these are I think if I'm correctly like, these top like these five are at the top band, and the AA should be somewhere around Vinal like uh, these top five as well. I don't know, maybe one of them is on on number six, but yeah, these are the most Sorry. common bands whatsoever. The next picks they come pretty fast, to be honest. Venomancer for Team Liquid, and a Dazzle for Revenge. Yeah, this Venomancer just adding to the pushing potential of the Nature's Prophet with the Plague Wards, as well as overall a pretty nice hero, just a Venom scale. One of the best slows in the game, and the Poison Nova can do a ton of damage, but I think the Dazzle counters the damage coming out from the Venomancer quite nicely with his Shadow Wave, and the Dazzle together with the Bristleback, the Minus Armor from the Weave combined with the Quill Spray, that's a lot of damage coming out, and for Team Liquid, one problem I see at the moment is heroes just TPing out when they go on them. Sure, they have the slows and everything but nothing to actually stop them from just TPing out. Yep, th that's that's true. But for Revenge, I'd actually, actually like to see some more Minus Armor coming out. I can see a Slaughter coming. I can also see maybe a Weaver coming. Or, I don't know, a Vengeful Spirit as a second support there. That would be like the three options I have now in mind that provide Minus Armor on top of the Nasal Goo, like plus the Dazzle Ultimate, and then something that comes uh, like as a direct cast, like for example, a Wave of Terror or Waving Terror. I always mix this up. Waving Terror? Wave, wave of Terror? Wave of. <laughs> wave of Terror, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's Wave of Terror, uh, adding the, the additional minus armor. That would be amazing. Well, on the other side, Team Liquid, to be honest, this is pushing strategy 101. We have the Venomancer wards, we have the Nature's Prophet trains, we have the Familiars, and now we have the Exorcism of Death Prophet. And I think with Death Prophet, we also like removed all the mystery around the mid lane because that Death Prophet is going to end up there. Yeah, this Death Prophet, I mean, just Team Liquid is going almost all out push, but they can team fight as well with the Venomancer as well as the Death Prophet, just spamming out Crypt Swarm and the Exorcism Spirits just doing the damage. But the Dazzle Weave, if used defensively, it's a very nice tool against the Exorcism actually. And a Juggernaut pick up by Revenge, okay. Juggernaut. That's that's actually interesting. That's really interesting. because. You know what I already see coming? Juggernaut running in, getting silenced by the Death Prophet, not spinning and not getting his ulti off and then he dies. This is like kind of what I'm afraid of. So Juggernaut needs quite some HP pulls to, to go up there in a team fight. Then again, he has the chance to actually go sneaky. Like, except for the Visage, all of those here, like in the mid game, are easy targets for his ultimate. I don't know, with the Shallow Crave, he might actually like spin TP out a couple times. There won't be any bash on Team Liquid, I pretty much doubt it. Even though they could still pick a heavy core or they go even all out push. In the meantime, we see the bans happening and it's the Crystal Maiden, which I actually. Yeah, I actually like the Crystal Maiden ban because the Crystal Maiden on Revenge would have been decent. They already picked their core, they have the tanky crystal back, the invoker for mid, so the running mana aura definitely would have helped them. Yeah, the Arcane Aura is it would have been really nice for the Bristleback foremost because he has a really low mana pool and the Quill Spray, it's only low mana cost but with that mana pool you still can spam it like endlessly but with the Arcane Aura could do it way more and the same goes for the Juggernaut he has like one Blade Fury and with the Omni Slash I mean he has to get some stats items to actually get both of those spells out. Yep, definitely. By the way, I have to give a I have to give a shout out to the Spanish stream. Like they have one thousand three hundred people. So where are the Americans? Like seriously, where are the Team Liquid fans? Like the Spanish stream is full of revenge fans. Shut and for Team Liquid, I don't know, 
not common. I really hope they're just late. Let's call it. Anyway, we have a ban happening. Well, um, I, I say that, and yeah, it's the draw. The draw actually would have perfectly fit into Team Liquid setup just for the fact that the Visage Familiars, like with the aura, they scale so much. Like the agility, when he activates that aura, the uh, say the Familiars, even if they have no charge left, they hit for 92 damage and they hit for 203 damage if they have all the 7 charges up after they landed. This is just insane. Like we saw it in the last game, the combination of draw plus Visage Familiars is just crazy. And the Slaughter, as a pick, I wanted to see him with the Dazzle in combination, but he comes out for Team Liquid, so too bad. Yeah, and it fits reasonably well. The Visage Familiars with the right clicks, as well as the Death Prophet Exorcism Spirits, just the Amplified Damage, I mean, it's pretty decent to boost up the damage of the Team Liquid side. And of course, the Amplified Damage <laughs> makes the Bristleback so much squishier. What do I just but see there? What, what do I just see there? It's a Troll Warlord. Is it it's a Support Juggernaut? <laughs> I don't know, what, what is this? Like, Invoker mid, Bristleback offlane, and then we have what? I don't know, like tell me. I'm 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 baffled by this pick. I mean, it cannot be a troll support, rather a juggernaut support. I mean, that I have seen at least. But then again, oh god, this can be anything really. And I I do have to say I prefer Team Liquid's lineup a little bit here. At least, well, always fun to see new things, I guess, from Revenge, and hoping to see they can make it work as well. Yep, it's, I don't know, I, I won't even talk about any of the lanes for revenge because I'm absolutely baffled by what they just picked. So I hope I didn't mess up my overlays, no I did not. So, we have Kuipwa on the Nature's Prophet. Baba is taking the mid with, I hope at least, yep, with the Death Prophet. We have TC on the Slaughter, like way to is going for the Visage and Fluff, Fluffy Fluff is going for the Venomancer. And for the Radiant side, for Revenge, Green playing up on the Dazzle, Smash going towards the mid lane by the looks of it on the Troll Warlord, Masoko on the Invoker, gonna be on the safe lane, Benjas also going towards the safe lane at the moment on the Juggernaut, and the last one is Mihawk on the Bristleback, probably in the off lane. Yep, so I was right with the off lane, but I was totally wrong with the, with the mid, so the Troll is gonna take the mid, the desert's probably gonna join, or is this is this double duel coming out? Is this Juggernaut, Invoker, and a Dazzle, Pristle duel lane? Is that what Revenge wants to go for? I still can't figure this, to be honest. Actually, it might be exactly that, but the Dazzle starts with zero items. He has given everything away. He got the Observer Wards, he got the Courier, probably shared Tangos to everybody else. Smash having two of them, and does the Invoker have any? Nope. No, at the Where moment the hell are they're camping the rune, and I just want to talk fast about the wards we have, like the radiant ward coming out here, giving vision to the top rune, and on the opposite side for the bottom rune we have a ward coming out by liquid. So far I don't see anything else, but I'm pretty sure, yep, the dazzle seems to stay with the pistol, so he's probably gonna put the ward somewhere around here in the central spot, even though. Actually, there's Observer Ward now coming out as well for Team Liquid, so they want Vision as well. We might see Double Observer and a little Dewarding War coming out early. Anyway, the Creep Waves meet, let's go into the game. Yeah, this troll pick, man, everybody is like, wow, what the hell? Yeah, and definitely. of course, it is quite surprising, but I do like uh, Revenge going for the dual lane here. Just because the Dazzle should be able to keep Mihawk alive. And the Quill Spray, together with the Shadow Wave, actually they can do a ton of harass damage. So I'm hoping Magic Sticks to come out from Team Liquid. TC already grabbed his, so he came prepared. Yep, definitely. I mean, I actually like the idea of dual lanes. It's something new, it's, it's refreshing, and you know why I like it. The Invoker is not farming at the moment, so all he needs is level 2. He goes into the Cold Snap, Cold Snap on, on Kvoipa, and then we have the Spin coming out also. Like on level 3, I think they can get an easy Koipa kill there. Yeah, they might, or at least shoot the Cold Snap uh, Blade Fury combo, like you said, just so strong. 
constant procs of the gold snap happening and I really don't understand this it's a support in Moker, it's not something you see at all, like seriously, at all. Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting to say the least. It's I don't know, I really hope Revenge Plan goes like into some successful laning stage here because the idea I like it. It did the, the dual lanes it's decent and the troll seems to do fine as well. Like troll at the moment eight and one, the death profit just ten and zero. And yeah, he's getting now even more and he seems to be quite prevailing on the lane at the moment. Yeah, not doing too bad. He's keeping up with the last hits and actually harassing the Death Prophet at the same time as well. So, very mm. nicely done. But now the bottle coming out for the Death Prophet. Oh, we have and action I... on top. Oh, yeah, they're going on Mihawk, dropping really low. The Crash was already used. The Quill Spray is coming out, but oh. the first blood goes out to TC Slaughter, actually. And he survives thanks to the magic stick. Now Smash coming in with the haste run. Misses the first axis but gets the kill with the whirling axis as the melee version of it. So a yeah. one for one for the time being but Smash wasting some time away from the mid lane. Yeah. If he had not gotten the kill it would have been a disaster but made something from it at least. <coughs> to be honest, I, I mean the Dazzle didn't pick up Shallow Crave. That would have brought them I think in a better position there with the haste rune and the troll rotating. It gave the Death Prophet a little opening because he could farm in that time, but still, it's it's pretty nice that the troll actually came and got a revenge kill. Still slightly in favor there for Liquid, simply for the fact that this was a was a first blood, so there goes a lot of gold away. And yeah, like at the moment we see Kuipa actually creep skipping. I think he did it successfully. Yeah, this was a creep skip, so he's getting quite some XP now. He's level three, almost level four, so. Koipa definitely getting something on his lane. This is better than what we saw on, on other Nature's Prophets. Yeah, Koipa has a pretty nice time. Then again, it's Invoker support with a farming Juggernaut. It's not the scariest thing if you just stay back enough and maybe even mm, body block with the tree ends. But now they're going somewhere. Nature's Prophet now just keeping base to farm up. Maybe rotate to the jungle after now. Yep, he's summoning trees in the base. The question is where does he send them? Does he actually rotate in the jungle? He's like, oh guys, I have too much lane control. I'm going jungle and come back when actually a creep whiff is coming in. So the jugger is going to get free from there. The question what I have is with the dual lane we see at the moment coming out on the like support invoker. Is this a level 6 rush on the jugger and then invoker is trying to get uh, level 6 as well? I mean, it's not crucial for him, but like he also needs a couple points for this Quas Wax to actually be of any significance. Yeah, I don't really know. I mean, it's so weird to see that this is happening. He now ha at least has Boots of Speed, has invoked up the Tornado together with the Cold Snap. So they are looking for something, but Koikwa just smartly rotating into the jungle. He knew that the levels are coming up from Revenge, so the damage and the pick of potential was too high for him to actually risk it and I really hope this invoker will find some levels yep what I don't like at the moment about liquid is that they give absolutely rune control to the troll the troll has been able to pick up every rune so far the second rune spawned it was a double damage he got it and that keeps him in the lane at the moment against the the death prophet because he is he's using the rune and the free charge is coming along with it and he's bottle crawling on top of it and that's the only reason he can actually stay in lane against Boba at the moment and Boba not bothering too much with the rune the 6 minute rune is up in 30 seconds and I hope till then he got his face boots up yeah he might have them yeah he has them on the courier coming in with the bottle so he's gonna have a pretty decent enough time at the moment he is ahead with 8 last hits actually of the troll, so not doing that bad. But the top lane for revenge, it's failing quite heavily just in regards of them getting 0 XP almost. They are both level 3, actually I know that Dazzle is level 4, but TC on the Slaughter, level 5, Fluff on the Venom Master level 4 and the Visage also 4 and they're going in, there's the Christ the Slow, Venom Scale as well, this Priest Black is dead for sure. Oh, and there's Soul Assumption. So much. Stakes, he just grabs the kill for himself. Four stacks of quill, quill spray on them, but just not enough. That burst damage, three on one. No way if you're only a level three bristleback with no items. 
Yeah, I don't know, maybe the Bristol didn't get the memo there that uh, Dazzle is actually leaving for the rune. So after all, it wasn't really worth it. A regeneration rune spawns, the Droll could have actually needed it. Now, the Droll actually pushing the tier 1 mid, but yeah, Cliff is coming out. But the Prophet permanently being out of mana, so I mean... Oh, Venomans are coming in from the side as well. Can you land the Gale? Not trying to go for it yet, finally goes for it. And the TP out by Smash Builder B.A. Stun, the Crush gets the hit. And TC, what a rotation in. The creeps get the kill, but definitely worthwhile for TC to come in. But what a stun, what a timely stun. This was about, I don't know, the last second or the last split second before he was out. But yeah, in the meantime, the Jarker and Volker combination. Not too bad, the dual lane. Invoker is level 5, the Jarker now level 6, and they start to push the lane. The Venomans are rotating in, trying to be a nuisance with the walls, but. At the moment, it's more gold for a jugger than anything else. Yeah, the, the bottom lane working out relatively well, like you said. But I'm just so afraid that this Bristleback won't have an effect or not fast enough. With the Slardar farming up pretty decently, I mean, he doesn't have the most farm either. And but he is a, at least level this 6. This is a mech, by the way, on him. Do I see actually a mech coming out of here? The Buckler has been picked up and yep. the re Ring of Region is... In his stash, so this is a Mac Crystal back. Well, I mean, the Mac is a decent item on him. I think yeah, it's some armor, some HP, and uh, the heal on him. I guess yeah, it's worth it when he goes tanky there. But still, like he needs some mana for it. Though. Yeah, that's that's the problem. Prisa and the mana pool is not quite the most effective. Oh, Smash using a nice whirling access, the range version to slow down the Death Prophet, but with Fluff rotating in. Couldn't yeah. really chase for the rune. It's still. the first rune Fluff actually gets this game. This is eight minutes in, though. Yeah. Just well, I guess he might pop exorcism, go in with, and <laughs> go mental. <laughs> and Yolo. <laughs> yeah. Well, it actually uh, might happen. The question is also maybe he's using it for for rotation, but the problem is he doesn't have too much mana over. That's the problem. What I like is that the troll fast level now, like the entire team is benefiting from his ultimate as well, like they hit so fast, the tier 1 goes now down for revenge and I think I'm just gonna go fast to the, oh well, no we have no action at the moment, so fast craft after the tower, we have a 2000 experience lead for liquid, so they're definitely ahead there, but liquid had, I don't know, Barely 1k advantage in gold and revenge now with the tower just pretty much turned this around so 200 ahead so gold absolutely equal at the moment and this is yeah it it goes along with what we said all the time the laning yeah. works sort of out for everybody at the moment it's not going really bad for either side it's quite even Koikwa has his hand of might as he got it around eight minutes a little bit before even so a pretty decent time for an offlane prophet and that's well, at least some source of the XP coming in for them now. And of course Slardar, I mean, he doesn't even finish up power threads by the looks of it. He's just rushing the Blink Dagger to get the initiation for his team. And once he gets it, they might find some easy kills. And I'm just afraid that when are the Chuggernaut and Invoker actually planning to get involved? I don't know, like at the moment they don't seem to be interested with what, what's going on. Like, they say like, guys, we find farm here on the lane. We might even go to tier 2, even though they would run against like a little wall of fence here by the Plague Wards, but it's really interesting, I think the Jugger doesn't mind, he can go in there, even farm up the wards, then just go out, healing ward will do the rest. And now, Death Rope, but getting the second rune of the game, and it's a haste rune, and that's dangerous. Oh, <laughs> oh he gets the kill as well, the troll just dies in the mid lane. Oh my god. This was really unlucky to be honest, he just swapped into ranged form, he got one wave by the Death Prophet and the the Nature's Prophet, a bounce of his ultimate, is actually getting the kill, so I don't know, that was that was pretty unlucky doing going there for the swap, because yeah, he lost his bonus HP there and he was already low, so this 100 bonus HP guys sometimes decides about li living or dying pretty much, life and death. Yeah, sure does. And the boss comes out for revenge, but it's a this boss. Slardar picked up the Blink Dagger, already put the Amplify damage on the Bristleback, and I really think that they might just go for it at some point. Maybe when Koikwa has more mana to TP in and create the tree and to tank up the tower or something of the sort. 
because I mean, this bristle is sitting on minus one armor pretty much. Yep, bristle is sitting at minus one armor, but he will get more like when when the mag comes out and he goes for I don't know, maybe we see. Maybe we see a plate mag coming out, which is maybe not too bad. Like I mean, we have soul assumption, we have all the poison damage of the venomancer, we have the exorcism. So a plate mag, I think, not a too bad choice for this game because there's a lot of things you can uh, reflect and a lot of things liquid can't stop from happening. Like once you dotted him up, for example, and you pop play ma plate mail, then yeah. You know what I like? That the dazzle is uh, <laughs> that is referring to his own players as orange. Like in a pub. <laughs> Orange <Yeah>. is <laughs> lagging. <laughs> he needs a restart fast. <laughs> team spirit. That's team spirit. <laughs> they, you know, they don't, they don't care about names. They just refer in colors to each other. That's all good. Yeah. And actually, the Bristleback almost has his mech finished, but then again, he doesn't even have boots of speed. So he can't really run away from anything if Liquid wants to go for him. This is, by the way, very interesting. Like, a Bristleback with a Mac Rush, it's almost 11 minutes. He's 200 gold away from the Mac, but, like, what is a Mac without a Bristleback that doesn't have the boots? I mean, if there's actually a fight breaking out, what d does he do? Like, just stand in the mid, hope for some, I don't know, some lucky attacks on his back so he get Quill Spray, and then he's popping the Mac, and then he's out? I, I don't know, it's like... It's strange to see what's the plan with the Prisal back, but then again, I mean, <laughs> revenge at the moment, their dual lane system sort of worked out even though the kill counter says otherwise. What's even more interesting, the Invoker, actually, I don't know, he's doing well. Like, in consideration, he's 11 in zero, he got PTs done, quite, still having some consumables, he's doing the pulls for the Jugger, the Jugger doing quite well, he is leading the CS. So, I don't know. Support Invoker? New meta? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, and I don't know if I like the power threats too much. I mean, he has Quas Vex anyway, so he is attacking faster than normal. Of course, he doesn't need right-click damage anyway when it's a Support Invoker. So, I actually thought that he might go for Arcane Boots for his whole team. Because currently, there are none. The Bristleback, no way he's going to go for them. But he could use the mana when he is running the mech, as well as the Dazzle. I mean, he might go for Arcanes later on, but maybe once an urn first or something. What I'm, what I'm really curious about is that, I mean, okay, we, we see a support invoker, and I like the idea. I mean, Revenge is coming up with, I mean, I wouldn't call it a new idea. It already has been played, and in pubs you're going to see that even quite often, or like in lower tier uh, tournaments you see that happening. But... He doesn't have a smoke. He didn't try to rotate in on the Nature's Prophet on Koipfa there. And even now, like I mean, look the, at the positioning of the Venomancer and look at the Juggernaut. If the Invoker had a smoke, would come from the side, the Cold Snap or Tornado into Cold Snap, they probably kill him even with the spin. The, he, they don't even need the Omni Slash for for killing that that uh, I don't know Venomancer off. So so far he's absolutely inactive, and we talk about 11 minutes into the game. I just don't like the idea. Like, if you have a Crosswag support invoker, then he, he w wants to do something, I think, at least on my paper. Go active. Yeah, and that, that's the, like, one thing. You first pick the invoker and then put it as a support. It's somewhat of a wasted pick, I think. I mean, it might work out in the end. He hasn't done anything so far. But if it just gets a few levels, the Tornado, EMP, plus the Cold Snap, they're still really annoying spells to go up against. And at the moment, looks like he's even maxing out Quas for the Cold Snap to have the maximum amount of effect. Yep, I don't know. But I like, actually, like you, you said like you don't like the Invoker first pick and then you set him on support. I actually like it because... In the current meta, Invoker is the most picked and banned hero after 6.8. And every time we see Invoker first pick, every team, like every captain out there, unless he knows the other team, thinks, okay, guys, we are dealing with the Invoker, potentially cross wax, bec because that's at the moment like the dominant spec, in the mid. And then he starts drafting, and he starts drafting around the fact that Invoker is mid, so you have to find an equal strong mid against him. 
and you have to be aware that like the entire team might be yeah tornado EMP etc the entire fuss so Revenge goes for the first pick and puts him in a support role and suddenly you see the game starts and you see a troll in the mid and that's trolling around with what you were planning and I mean they went for a dual lane strategy and so far I, I can't say it failed I mean the kill score says otherwise at the moment it's 1-4 in 11 minutes not much action going on but when I look at the crafts I mean we can look at the crafts right now Liquid is on a 4k experience lead which is I don't know quite correlating with the fact that the trilane is properly farming and they are free kills ahead but when it comes to gold for example like Wic Liquid barely has 500 gold lead they're heading towards 750 gold lead so there's no difference whatsoever and the only reason they're ahead in the experience is really the kills and I don't know the fact that the invoker is maybe not as effective as the other rotations so I like it I just like it <laughs> Well, the only good thing for me about it is that the Invoker can scale into the late game, I guess, somewhat as a support. I just really think that there maybe would have been supports who could have given something to the team a little bit earlier already. But yeah. it, it can work out. I mean, we've yet to see him in a fight of any magnitude. That's, that's the point. We have to see him in the fight. I mean, he's a support Invoker and he is zero, zero, zero. <laughs> hit 11 minutes into the game so yeah please active invoker anyway the game commences guys let's go and looks like Roche is about to happen for team liquid way too sexy having picked up the medallion of courage his familiars as well as the treants are just doing it if only they had the amplified damage from the slaughter as well I'm not too sure if he can do it alone nature's prophet finally keeping yeah, in there and and in I think he was. He has new creeps. Like he has a new set of trains there, and that's enough to tank up Rashan with the medallion here. And if they don't spot it, then this is definitely an easy rush for Team Liquid there. But they should be able to get it, but did they give the Aegis to the Prophet then? So no, no. TC coming in at the last uh -huh. moment. Nicely done there. Slardar with the Aegis of the Immortal can just jump in with no fear whatsoever. And Blink Dagger cooling down, I think, mid lane. No, they back off in time. Yeah, that's good. Like, of course, they should go back there. And Kuiper and the Venomancer saying hello to the jungle, but they're heading directly back. And still, the Invoker now, <laughs> now ghost walking somewhere next to the uh, Jugger slash bait. Hashtag bait yeah. successful soon. Let's see. It actually might be, I mean. That's a pretty nifty strategy there. <laughs> and actually the chat, or at least one guy, Liberator, is saying that Cold Snap plus Spin is Team Wipe. Well, it kills one guy, I guess. And saying mostly that the Invoker is to counter up uh, the Death Prophet, just Ice Wall down so that the Death Prophet couldn't chase you with the ultimate. Well, I would agree with the viewer there if we wouldn't talk about 13 minutes into a game and an invoker that hasn't been involved in anything yet. Nothing. I mean, Revenge has one kill that happened on a duel versus a try lane. That was the first blood. I know that was the revenge kill of the troll when he rotated with the haste rune. And apart from that, I don't know. Like, if it comes late game, and this is the question, does Revenge say, guys? We picked Greedy, we have an Invoker and Juggernaut, Troll and Prisol who can just farm forever as long as we keep our towers and the base of course. So we just go late game with this and go all out Greedy. That might be their plan. I don't know if it works out because Liquid, I think at around 15 minutes we're gonna see them pushing. Yeah, I would think so as well. Maybe Nature's Prophet wants to grab the Necrobook first. I'm not too sure if he wants to grab it at all. Maybe try to go for the Shadow Blade even. Yeah. Just to get rid of maybe the Chuggernaut Omni Slash and go to the Shadow Blade. So can't but really follow you. Oh, oh mid lane so. Poison Touch goes on the Death Prophet. But no, they don't he's go going in it. alone. Yeah. No, but I think Team Liquid is ready to push because look what we have. We have a Nature's Prophet, almost level 11. We have Aegis on the Slaughter and he also got the backup of the... Uh, of the dagger, so he can initiate. We have the familiars, no, not level 11 yet, but still. Le oh, mid lane, they actually get the death prophet. Chuggernaut finally coming in to help get that kill. Fluff and stuff TP, but to no avail. And now Masoko getting crushed up the amplified damage, and yeah, he's a dead invoker. Yep, 
There goes the support invoker, so that's a tower for a death profit kill and a bonus invoker kill on top of that. I don't know if that's worth it. Plus, they, oh, they ping Oh, mid lane bluffing stuff getting slowed down by the Axis. Ben just is there and gets the right click to get the kill. Finally, he gets the penalty for being so aggressive on the Venomancer. But on top lane, they just keep on pushing. Like, they don't care. They have the familiars. A set of creeps, but now comes the rotation of the Bristle back, And he finally has boots. Poor Eka, like Yeah, he's level 14. 8 now as well, so not looking too bad. Yep, Although, 14 of course, minutes <laughs> boots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Epic win. Epic win, no, but I think they want to go tier 1 mid here because it's 137 HP. This is easy, unless they get the deny. Oh, the EMP tornado is there, the tornado completely misses oh, though, but they get nice, the deny because of it. Really nice, like. That profit was just a bit short there in right click and yeah. But they really plan to farm out this jugger heavily because all he does, he comes in, did the Omni Slash, they got the kill on Death Prophet with it, and now he just goes back to farming. I guess it's the smartest thing you can do. But I don't know, like going hard carry on, on the juggernaut. Let's see if this works out. In before mass ghost scepters. Oh he dodges the venom scale, but does Ben just want to go aggressive? The supports are coming in or well. The other heroes, at least, Palba was looking to go for it. If they had hit the Venom scale, then maybe, but the Ve Juggernaut is like safe as long as he has played Fury TP already. Yep, I don't know. Like, at the moment. Oh, oh Midland oh, Tornado sorry. EMP onto the Slaughter. Cold Snap is there as well. Smash does a decent amount of damage. He can't even get the crush because of no mana. That's the, Aegis. the Aegis gets popped and. That's Very nicely done, but Nature's Prophet comes in from the side. Masoku trying to TP away, familiars are stopping it. Now Crash as well as the Crypt Swarm from Balba getting the kill. Uh, it's too bad he's level 8 because the Ghost Ball could have saved him there, but yeah. Oh, the oh, Nature's Prophet. Ah, Shadow Blade. Buff and Tuff is gonna die. There's the Omni Slash going out and that gets the kill already. Yeah, Fluff and stuff. Playing aggressive and get punished for it, but there's a rotation oh, coming in. Fury TP out very nicely done. Yeah. And the exorcism is getting popped, so this is gonna be a tier 1 tower. But they wanna trade. The Dire Cliff is, is out now, but the troll ultimate and yeah, him focusing one target. Like they will die approximately about the same time. It should be about right and yeah. Both yep. towers go down <laughs> within like one or two seconds difference. Yeah, nice trade there after all. I mean the jugger gets a kill after the invoker fell and like two towers trade. So equal for revenge, and revenge is getting now on the scoreboard we were talking about being not active enough now it comes yeah they have picked up the slack at the moment it was one to four in the kill score now suddenly four to six they do spot oh, out smash though yeah. no he goes out the right in time and look at this aggressive ward actually coming out by liquid i yep. really like that ward they just it shows how they want to play this game and yeah, Deathrop is going in the crypt form does it use scepter now used as well but is he back? You don't know, TC comes in with the crush, they should get the kill, minus our nice tornado to save some time. He goes down nevertheless, says TC, uh, limping away with, with no mana. But at the same time, tower goes down for the Juggernaut, and they seem to be pushing even more. Nature's Prophet pretty close there, and so far, no actually, yeah, Dazzle picked up now Dust, so Koipa has to be careful there. If he gets spotted out, it won't help him, and oh, they actually spot him out. But the yeah, desert is not going for it. The he one wasn't thing sure if that there was more. Yeah. And revenge, the only thing they're lacking at the moment is the champion potential that Liquid has in the form of Slardar. Revenge just they don't have the proper initiation. Sure they have the tornado, but if the tornado misses, then how yeah. can they go in? I don't know. But at the moment we see Deathrop having Invisibility rune and exorcism ready. So is he baiting some TPs here now? No, he's actually yeah, he's going back before anything happens. Corpo is farming the ancients, but he's really low HP. Now is he, he heading toward the enemy jungle just to use his Midas, I guess, on the big creep. Oh, Masoko is so dead. Palba camping him out. The others coming in. Visage is there. There's the silence coming out. Crypt swarm. Actually, way too sexy. Fails. He can't get in range for the grave chill. Familiar stuns miss as well, and now Mihawk is giving chase. The tornado barely misses the backside of Palba. Oh, that's that's really too bad. But we see an opening there on top instead. 
Oh yeah, they're gonna get something maybe TC is printing out finally poison touch coming in and there's the Omni slash yes, grabbing really the Really nice. Really nice use of, of the spin there. He dodged uh the crush by the uh slaughter and yeah. Pretty nice. He dodged it first, then he was chasing him and yeah. Perfect play, Omni slash finishing the job. And Five actually, and seven. Yeah, it's not looking too bad suddenly, but Balba on the hunt, he has a road of 8 toss finished up as well, so he can slow targets down from quite far away. And there's no TP for the Dazzle, and he gets oh. spotted out, Balba, map pack. That and poor guy. Dazzle should go down. He uses the weave, <laughs> the Shallow Grave is available now, doesn't even go for it. He should have just bought a bit delayed. more time with the Shallow Grave, I guess. I mean, yeah. well, the first one, it's 45 seconds, that's about... Yeah, by the time he would have been back on the pitch, it would have been ready. He could have stole a bit more time for the death row for there. But it doesn't matter. He was found. No TP money. Just too bad. And Prizzle is catching up in farm, by the way. We see the PT is now finished. Like, <laughs> this is the Prizzle back who got the boots of speed at 14 minutes after the Mac first item. Now he got a vital uh, like vitality booster. Not too bad after all. Yeah, and he's gonna have the Vanguard rather soon. So if he gets more OTC, Tornado, EMP, but he blinks out. Yeah, really nice. And the troll is actually getting a factor now in this game. We see a double damage up on him, so I don't think Liquid wants to engage against a double damage troll. Plus, he has to play King Bar, so we are talking about a, a troll who got some HP pool now as well. The Yasha is up on him. I don't know, what is the Yasha? Is this a... Is this a S and Y there? Like... This is Sangha Yashor. Yeah, I'm not sure it might be a Manta style. Maybe just a casual Yashor to start, but... No, I mean, I yes and why, it wouldn't be too bad, I think, in this game. It, it pretty much only removes the debuff of Slaughter, which is uh, not, not too bad after all, I guess, but... The Sangha Yasha would actually help him to stay on a target if it gets slowed. Yeah. I really think the SNY wouldn't be too bad, but does the Manta style get rid of the silence from the Death Prophet? Uh, yeah, should be. Well, in that case, it can still be really useful, I guess. Especially for the Chuggernaut, who I otherwise wouldn't be able to Blade Fury and Omni Slash, but he already has it plus 2.3k now on top of that. So Chuggernaut actually ahead in net worth at the moment. What? What are our viewers talking about? Channel disband? Are they talking about us or the Spanish channel? <laughs> like on my screen we're still broadcasting. Yeah, I am mean, just talking some random stuff. I mean, I th <laughs> think they meant that we're complete bullshit and sh should stop doing it. <laughs> no, no, they meant you're. You are. Not me. It's just you. <laughs> yeah. Well, fine by me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're taking all the heat. That's good. Of course. I, I like your commitment, Coucher. It's huge. <laughs> oh, Koikva might be in some trouble. He does have the Orchid and the Shadow Blade, and he's backing off. They didn't even spot them out because it was nighttime. No vision to be had. And this Observer Ward by Liquid spots out everything that's and going on by time. This time, Slaughter is involved as well. So we look at minus 18 armor for it for Roshan. At the moment, he's nothing but a melee creep with a lot of HP. Yeah, he's gonna die rather fast now. Koifa coming in as well. And TC actually going for a Heaven's Halberd, I think. Yep, and to be honest, I think we just saw the start of Liquid's game. Now they have the Ages again. They have all the initiation, all the tools they need. I mean, Rune of Aethos, you'll stun on the Plath Prophet. Unless, I mean, he needs to go more tanky. But they have everything they need. They have the Exorcism, they have the Medallion, they have the Aegis Dagger on the Slaughter. It can't be better at the moment, so on Koipa, of course, he can split push or join the party as well. So, Liquid has to start their game now. Yeah, and they're going in with the level 2 exorcism. There's nothing they can do. The crash stops Masoko's TP out, and this is a dead invoker. The mech gets used by Mihawk, but doesn't change too much yeah. in the end. And they trade, actually. I mean, they get the... Yeah, they get the tired tier 2, but the question is worth the trade because Liquid wants to continue or okay I'm, I'm lying guys because Liquid actually falls back they don't use the residual exorcism so after all this was again a tower trade with a bonus kill for Liquid because the invoker didn't get out so I don't know by the way we see a ogre club coming out by the slaughter and they ping on mid they want to get quite far there I don't think they'll be able to catch knows. up though 
you know. Or the Dazzle, sees him. Oh, he's going in with the Orchid, maybe there's the Sprout, the Orchid as well. I think Dazzle is gonna die, he's starting to TP out, but it won't be enough. <laughs> Koipa is like, ah, oh, Orchid is gonna finish him, finish him. Oh, maybe not, uh, turn around, give him the last hit. <laughs> it's like, that was, you, you literally could see what he was thinking there. Indeed. And, I mean, Liquid, they're just getting their items. The Aghanim Scepter is also finished on way too sexy. Fluff and stuff has the mech finished, but needs the recipe from the stash. And TC now, Sanj finished up, needs around 600 gold more only to finish up the Halberd. And once he gets that, he'll be a lot more survivable. Plus, of course, he already has the Aegis. And now, S and Y finished by Smash as well, actually. So, both teams are finding some items. Yep. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Like as I said, like after the Roshan, I was like, yeah, now Liquid is gonna go. Every time they're full HP mana, they go for a push. But I don't know. Like Liquid seems to be hesitant. I think they dominate the game at the moment. They have the upper hand. Like they have to capitalize on it because I still think that if Revenge goes late with this, they have a crazy lineup, and if the crazy lineup works out for him, oh. <laughs> Crystal is using a dust on Koipa there, but Koipa just TPing out. There's no stun whatsoever. I don't know, that was a waste of 90 gold, I guess. Yeah, just... He got a little bit eager, but a Freeman smoke in the mid lane now. There are only familiar to be seen. They definitely want to hunt for something, guys. Benjas also backs off on the top lane. He's going for a butterfly on that juggernaut. Oh, they might find... Oh, they might oh, yeah, find liquid TC, here. actually. TC. Smashed the s smoke goes out. There's the familiars. Amplify damage is there. The crash misses actually. The tornado goes out as well. TC on the run. There are no slows coming out. He doesn't use the Omni Slash either. On the slaughter there. Exorcist the slaughter has the Aegis is too tanky. And Death Prophet is chasing now. Spin out by Benjamin. Smash on the run as well. The Shiva card gets used. And once again, Dazzle just falling down. He this time around at least he buys enough time. But he will go down now. There's BKB popped by Smash. He's going full deep plus goes down as Benjus comes in from the backside. Omnis has used it already as well. Blade Mail by Mihawk doing some damage, but it's not enough. Palba, that exorcism is just too much for them to handle and revenge. Oh Overwhelmed. What did we just see? This was this was murder. This was Oh my god. They fought at such a bad position as well, yeah, I think. Yeah, such a bad position, like Liquid coming from both sides. The Dazzle, who is supposed to be in the back line, supporting the team, getting caught out first. The Aegis being popped on Slaughter, but yeah, sure, right after, they just they just separated the entire team. Crystal didn't tank up for anything, the Mac didn't win on anything. I don't know, and like, also the... Say, the Omni Slash went into, I don't know, a lot of creeps there around, so... Oh. Question yeah, is, do they do they go for more? One set of racks is down for sure now. Quip was summoning a couple more trends, so they want to go for more. They actually might at least try to get some damage done. And I really can't say I'm agreeing with Tazzle's item pickup as well. He's going for an Aghanim Scepter. But it looks like Liquid is playing around with them because they could have finished at tier 3 before they respawn, but like Death Prophet is just farming up like one of the awesome, very important buildings here in Dota 2. <laughs> and I don't know, it's I think they know. Oh we got the upper hand guys. We we just go next time. Next Roshan, we're coming. Yeah, I mean might be and there's no reason for them to just press the issue at the moment. Because they didn't have the Exorcism up for the Death Prophet, which is a huge source of damage. It is level 3. And so they're just waiting it out. There's no rush for them. They got one Rex. And I think they'll go for the next one rather soon. And now Benja's in big trouble. Amplify damage is there. But the Orchid doesn't come out yet. They are waiting it out, but no TP either. So he should go down in the end. Up. The crush, oh. but there is the Orchid now. Mantastel was already used. And Koifa was just waiting it out. Perfect timing, like the bash there helped so much. The bash and the perfect timing, so the orchid comes up. If you would have used Omni Slash there, maybe Koipa would have died. So at least the Jugger didn't die in vain. But oh well, just not their game at the moment. Revenge. Like I really thought they put up more of a fight, but Liquid they know what they have, and yeah, they they just play better together at the moment. They don't get caught out, they have the better push, 
And yeah, with the fight, I already mentioned it, like being so spread out and everything. Also the Invoker, not having any impact whatsoever. I have to say that the Invoker is 0, 4 and 1. We talk about a 29 minutes game, the Invoker is has one assist. This is sad, this is really sad. I mean, support Invoker, the one who, who should be so active. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I was saying that it's kind of a way to pick him as a support if you go for the first pick Invoker. Just maybe get some higher... Well, God, my brain is just not functioning because of that pick, really. <laughs> I mean, it could work out, I guess, but I think they could have gone or should have gone more aggressive early on. Yeah. The Invoker just fell behind too much. No, this is, I don't know, this is the last fight, I think, because we have to look at the buyback status, and the only one on the entire pitch is Slada with the buyback, so if this fails, it's over. Yeah, there's the Exorcist Tornado, EMP actually might hit the Yule Scatter coming out from the death from Smash goes in with a BKB, Blink Dagger Duck, can they kill anybody? They don't have vision of Koi Pop, just running in into the spirits, silenced up. And he might actually go down, yeah, he goes down before the Omni Slash, no buyback. Masoku to drop as well on the Invoker. That should be GG. Smash is doing something on the troll, but yeah, GG gets called as four There's heroes are down in the fifth. Happen, yep. Team wipe complete. Anyway, guys, the GG is called. This was game number one, Revenge versus Liquid. Revenge went for an interesting trap, and I actually gave it a chance. I was absolutely unbiased, and I was actually saying, this looks decent and the Invoker might work out, but guys, we talk about an Invoker with one assist after 30 minutes game. This is not how it should be. Either way, they go into game number two. Revenge can actually think about their draft and come up with a better strategy if they actually let Liquid get this draft through again. I hope you're staying with us within, let's say, five minutes. I hope game number two is up.